Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode, the first thing we need to do is send over a return ship to the surface of the moon to pick up our Kerbals at the emergency habitat. And that should take about a day. Uh, remember, we're on 24 hour time, so it takes about 6 hours to get to the moon and then uh, 6 hours back. And uh, so I'm, I'm expecting it to take a day, which means that we can complete it before these missions. Uh, well, anyway, that's the plan. I think I'll just send the same vessel I tried last time, but try and land well away from the emergency hab. And also, I think I'll quit out before actually trying to uh, go over to emergency hab to pick up the Kerbals. I don't know if that's got to be enough to solve the problem, but um, anyway, they've got 10 days worth of food, water, and oxygen. Um, can't see that here. Uh, but uh, we do have enough time to send other means if necessary, so that's good. And, well, what I end up finishing in this episode will depend on how long our recovery takes. Alright, so let's get started. You know, looking at this, I think I'd rather make a sleeker version instead of this. Yeah, this is a bit ugly, and I might as well give myself some more fuel margin. So yeah, maybe I'll uh, build it on the Strider light, the normal Strider light, instead of this SRB. That'll make me feel a little bit better. Well, there's no question that this is overkill. I've added Verners to uh, this stage here so that we can turn it to our maneuver node and use it to burn for the moon. And then we'll proceed. I've locked the tanks on the payload as well. So you're not seeing that there, but it's like more than 4,000 meters per second. Okay, here we go. We have the warnings here, and also the Drez Oasis warning, though that's not legit. That's because it just has a huge water capacity. Let me just double check, because we had trouble with the Drez Oasis before. I don't want to make any mistake about it, but yeah, it looks fine. Alright. Well, when I say fine, we really do need to send more stuff over to Drez. Um... And we might want to make that the main focus of our colonization now that we know that Duna isn't going to be a thing. So let me get that transfer window here. I want that just... Uh, and how about a Duna to Drez? I think you can see where I'm... Oh darn it, missed that. Uh, where I'm going with this. We might want to deploy all of our stuff to Drez instead of uh, having some of it around Duna when we can't uh, do anything around Duna. Maybe Carbonite? I don't know. We'll have to check, but certainly the water water exploitation units should be sent over to Drez instead. Okay, so here we go. No Kerbals in. Everything should be fine. And ignition. And launch. Okay, I'm just gonna hand off to Smart ESS. I keep having to remember that this is not the 1.0.5 Smart ESS, or even the one in 1.0 where you just have the plus and minus buttons. We've got overheating on the center engine, so I'm just gonna throttle down. Well, it's quite a rocket. Not a bad looking thing. I think the the version with the Strider SL certainly looks a little bit awkward. This looks less awkward. It's overdoing it, obviously, but at least it looks less awkward. In this version, it doesn't flip when you go this far away from the prograde vector. Very nice. Okay, booster set. And those should be recoverable. Now we have to watch out for electric charge because I'm using this engine to get us over to the moon, but that might mean that on our journey to the moon we might still have the solar panels shrouded. If it turns out that we still have enough energy to use this to get into orbit around the moon. I think we're definitely going to have enough Delta V to use this to make orbit around the moon and probably to do our entire descent. 
at this rate. Well, except for the last bit, obviously. Maybe we should try for a quick transfer, something that uses extra delta V instead of uh, the most efficient transfer. Okay, 124 by 115, let's say 125 by 115. And now let me plot. Okay, so I've decided to expedite by going quicker than is strictly necessary. And so uh, this is a 4 hour and 15 minute transfer instead of a 6 hour transfer to the moon. And that means we'll have to take more delta V to slow down over there as well, but we've got plenty of that. So no problems there. It's not going to take very long to do this burn. Being a little bit early probably won't be a problem. As far as electric charge is concerned, we don't seem to be consuming very much, but then again we've got the mainsail providing 12 units per second, so... The drain is only 0.03 apparently. Mm, yeah, we're getting further away now. Alright. Probably some inclination to us or something, but that's alright, that'll be fine. We've got 1,222 meters per second. Let's head over there. Let's pay attention to electric charge though. Yeah, we should be fine. I mean, 9 hours and 2 minutes. We'll definitely have this done before then. I mean, getting into orbit. Potentially, we could actually land before then. Okay, um, we could use with a, uh, use a little bit more inclination, but we'll just correct that later on. Let's just get into orbit first. The site is at uh, 10 degrees north. So 10 degrees of inclination would be good, but it's a minor detail that we can correct, simply enough. Okay, we are in orbit around the moon, and now I will plot for our descent to that location, though we want to land about, I think we want to land outside of render range. I think the Kerbals we find uh, traveling over in their EVA with the EVA packs. If not, the, the lander does have plenty of fuel and so we'll just have it hop on over to them wherever they happen to be. Okay, so I'll come back to you once I'm ready with that. Okay, I think this is a fine and direct way to go, so we'll just do the maneuver here in three minutes. And we'll be going a little bit fast when we pass over the target and high. We will be high because we're not in a tight orbit. But we can leverage the fact that we have this huge stage w with us to uh, make that fairly easy to deal with. We're now obviously suborbital. Let's see how that is. Looks alright. We're not at uh, 10 degrees, we're at 8.7, but it seems to cover the spot pretty well. Okay, let's proceed. I, I don't know, can we target Rover Alpha without any weird lag issues? Well, there was a little bit of a pause, sort of a bit of a suggestion of lag there. Okay, we can retro burn here and sort of start going straight down. Obviously not efficient, but none of this was efficient. This was meant to get the job done quickly. Eventually, we'll dump this stage so that it goes past the target like that. So we won't kill all of our horizontal velocity right now. It's pretty good though. Okay, I think that's good enough. Let's dump this stage and then proceed. Alright, RCS off. Set. Wow, that was loud. And I need to unzip the fuel. Does that look about right? Well, a little bit short, but that will serve our purpose. Okay, 
Oh, that's closer than I need it to be. I'll just get right outside this crater. I mean, if uh, the Kerbals could get from Moonbase Alpha down to the emergency hab here, I assume they can get from there to where I'm landing on this side. Hopefully we are still outside of render range. That was my goal. At least temporarily. If it turns out that that's too far for them, I might have to nudge it closer. We just got in the render range of the orange. The original orange. Hold on, uh, maybe, can I rotate the pod so, I want to have the ladder side on that side, that's all. Okay, okay, go down again. So they don't have to go across the pod in order to get to the door. Okay, oh, 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 come on. There we go, let me just... Cycle SAS and everything looks like a go. I didn't put a further ladder down here, but that should be fine for the moon. Okay. Right, I think we are outside of render distance. So let me go to the tracking station and then switch over to the emergency hab. Okay, here we are. Alright. Let me EVA Mike. Alright. Just let go, Mike. You could theoretically have him ride the rover over, but that's probably more dangerous than just having him EVA over to the target. I love that they added the nav ball to the EVA view now in 1.0.5. Here obviously we don't have that. You're gonna have to gain some height. Uh, we're, now we're getting into render range of the CRT. That little pause right there, that was render range for the CRT. Okay, very good. Got passed by the broken orange. I didn't clean it up because it's sort of like a monument to a great idea. I mean, my first sort of sky crane, but not really... Not really the sort of sky crane that dropped off the rover on the moon. Uh, it's a very different sort of contraption. Because that obviously wasn't meant to get back to orbit. Speaking of which, I should really uh, send over a sky crane for Duna, huh? That'd be helpful. Well, not Duna. Drez. <laughs> I guess it'd be Drez now. Yeah, I mean, we should definitely send a sky crane over. Then we won't have to have, you know, landing stuff on all of our modules when we do build a base on Drez, if that's the plan. I have been playing around with uh, colonization in 1.0.5. I'm going to be doing some experimentation on stream, on Twitch, and getting viewer help from for that in preparation for doing colonization in 1.1, which is currently the plan. Whether we do significant stuff at Drez before then, I don't know. I mean, who knows when 1.1 is going to come out. There's no particular indication as far as I can tell. This is quite a quite at the edge of the crater here, huh? Very defined crater. Okay, well we can descend a bit. I have to be careful about this. We can't descend at too quick a rate. I wonder how many people are actually involved in beta testing the releases. Yep, that's just a question I'm gonna throw out there. I have no idea. Grab and board. Okay, well now I have to jump back out and in again to safely go back to the emergency hab. Okay, here we are with Deseric. Well, come on, alright. Uh-oh, uh-oh, this is that bug. Um, no, Deseric EVA. Yes, uh, you're better off not going with that. Wow, that is a strange bug. 
Huh. Oh, um. I don't know if I've got control over him. I'm pressing R occasionally to see if I can get control, but. Well, uh, maybe if he bounces off of the ground, I'll gain, gain control. Ouch. Okay. And. Well. Once he settles down, he's gone into ragdoll mode. Okay. Uh, watch out for falling emergency habs. Yeah. Okay, well, there goes the emergency hab. Wow, the moon is just glitchy, isn't it? <laughs> oh, there it goes. I mean, wow. Wow, I mean, it's just everything is glitchy. <laughs> I mean, uh, this save has just turned into quite a quite an iffy place. I I hope the CRT is gonna be fine. Don't worry, I zipped up the save just in case. Okay, we're getting into render range of the CRT. On the bright side, it doesn't have any uh, weird parts that might have changed between 0.24 and 0.90. Of course. The emergency app was launched in 0.24. It was working fine until just a moment ago, though. Okay, so the plan is I'm going to be super careful. I will launch this into orbit, then I'll restart the game again. This probably means I'm not going to get too much done. Okay, grab. And board. Okay, figure out my orientation. All right, let's go. Well, so our troubled stay on the surface of the moon is now over. We now have no Kerbals on the moon. Interesting opportunity to gather some experience with base building, but Ultimately, fraught with tragedy, one Kerbal lost, and uh, a bittersweet end, if you will. Okay, let's coast up. Certainly not the conclusion that I was hoping for or expected. So yeah, I'm gonna restart after I make orbit because I sure don't want any bad physics calculations, any iffy business related to whatever happened to the emergency app to happen to us on re-entry. Okay, there we go. Okay, I know I've said this before, but uh, I don't actually want to come down on the first pass. I want to get into a tighter orbit. But I know I've tried to return from the moon before, said that, and ended up going straight down anyway. But I think 37 kilometers is a fine periapsis to avoid that. Okay, there we go. 37. Okay, out we go. I have to sort of remind myself we don't have the new heating that's in the game as of 1.0, but we do have deadly re-entry. I honestly don't know which is worse. Nope, we're getting heating effects here. Now, the one thing we don't have is the nice little colors and heating bars and all of that visual information. Possible. I, I think I remember the landing struts being vulnerable. Boom. Yep. Yep, the landing struts are vulnerable. Okay, going back up now. Still not entirely sure I'm going to make a nice tight orbit or whether it's eventually going to bring me back down. I think I'm going to be safe here. Okay, it looks like we're good. 
a little bit higher on the Apple App System than I'd like, but I'll take it. Better this way than the alternative. It looks like, uh, well, we could we could retro burn here for the KSC, couldn't we? Let's just keep our Apple Apsis in the... Ironically, I'm just gonna bring it down into the atmosphere anyway. But that's only after seeing where the KSC was. We probably want to splash down with this. No landing struts and all. So we're also going to be a little bit... Well, okay, a lot south. Okay, here we go with parachute deployment. Alright, they look to be fine. Just needed a little bit of an inclination adjustment. Okay, and recover vessel. Or flop first. Make a splash, and then recover vessel. Either way is fine. Mike and Desric. Stories will be told about their adventures on the moon, I'm sure. School children will have to learn all about them. Unfortunately, I don't think they actually got much experience out of that. Uh, six experience, advanced to level one. But uh, still... A little bit underwhelming. Alright, we got 94.5% of the value of the pod back. That's nice. But the important thing was getting the Kerbals back. Now we just have 34 of them assigned to various locations in the system. Just a reminder, we do have quite a lot of them to keep track of. So bringing two back is not too bad. Um, and we've got some experienced guys here now. Alright, let me check up on my tech tree. It seems like we've got 1,620 science right now. Maybe, maybe we can unlock some stuff. Okay, well, we've got large control and unmanned tech. You know, this little probe core probably ought to be just researched. But let me see before I do that. Got some good panels there. That's just procedural fairings. We don't need that big a fairing anyway. I don't know what that's all about. They're just adapters, so that's not really important. Torch drive. Carborundum. We need to find sources of carborundum, huh? But these are heavy. But look at that ISP. They're in it's insane. 125,000? You only need a little bit of carborundum. Well, those are huge thrust. Maybe we should make it our goal to find some carborundum and use those. I mean, that would be quite a achievement, right? Altogether. I haven't even I haven't ever used a car carborundum engine. Probably because it's very hard to find. Okay. Well, let's do that. Let's research that. Make that uh, one of our goals. That and the Drez thing. Maybe there's carborundum around Drez, we don't know yet. Hmm. Okay, but I can unlock this 300. No guidance units. Well, I can't unlock that just yet. Let me just fill out the 300 slot. Okay. So I have used my science. Let me bounce over to the jewel missions to see how they are. Maybe get something done there. Alright, so here we are with our jewel supply ship, and it is going into the SOI of Leith, and it looks like we are uh, just trying to capture is what's going to, get, what's going to happen. And then after that we have to deal with the Paul Water Fountain. So let's capture using Leith. Now where we leave this is a good question. Not entirely sure. Well, we've got the Jewel Oasis in orbit around Val, so I guess the logical thing would be to put it in orbit around Val. Val's a nice moon. Okay, our lath flyby. We don't really have to do anything. It's not like there's any science to do on board this particular craft. We just pass on by. Take advantage of Leith's gravity. And out we go again. 
Okay, we are in orbit. So, uh, let's see about Val. Trouble with that is, I don't know if I have enough Delta V to then capture, um... Well, I guess I could plot it out and check, huh? Okay, I think, yeah, that costs more than we have in order to get into orbit around Val. About 300, 400 more. Not a bad deal. Let's say we did Tylo instead. We could definitely get into orbit around Tylo without any trouble. Okay, let me see if I can get our course closer to Val and maybe we can cut down on how much it costs to get into orbit around it. We're already pretty close though, 1,337. Okay, so that's a loose orbit. Uh, well, still no. We need 200 more. We have some mod propellant, but not really enough. So, how about that Tylo thing? I like it sort of flat. Having it being polar is not helpful for what I really want to do. But it is nice to get into orbit like this. Hmm. Well, I guess it's a start. Let's try for this. I mean, yeah, that's probably the most straightforward thing to do. Okay, 0, 0.0. That's the burn to get into orbit. And as we pass by Val, we'll double check whether we can get into orbit around it. Certainly, that would be better than getting to orbit around Tylo. Of course, if we had wanted to get into orbit around Val, we might have wanted to get a little bit closer. Not this far out. Yeah, I forget I asked. Okay, moving right along. Going from Tylo back to Val might be a possibility. I don't know if that's that would take a long time or not. I mean, not a long time. A lot of Delta V or not. Wow, I'm amazed Leif doesn't interfere with us. Really? We're really close to Leif there. Huh. I mean, you can see Tylo's already bending us to its will here. We don't have to get into a tight orbit. We might as well be close to escape if we want to proceed to Val. Actually, uh, Megjeb already had us in orbit around Tyler. But, better that the game knows. And it still doesn't here. We certainly don't want any rounding errors to send us back into Julian space again. Okay. So that's an orbit. Not exactly in the place we need it, but maybe useful. Next, the uh, Paul water fountain. So this is headed into Paul, and we're hoping that our Delta V 1600, it looks like altogether, will be enough to bring us into orbit. Technically, the Delta V on the lander is not supposed to be used to get into orbit. That's supposed to be used for landing. Though, in the previous episode, we discovered that landing on Paul might not be the safest thing ever. Now, this can drill for carbonite. So, we do have... Uh, the scanner we have around Paul is a carbonite scanner. So, it's possible for us to... To drill for carbowinkle amus? Sixty days. That should be around Minmus, I think. Shouldn't be too hard to refuel that. But uh, we should keep an eye on it. Okay. Uh, so as I was saying, it can drill for carbonite using this little drill here, the mini drill. And that was actually supposed to just supply it with power. 
so I don't think it can do very much with it. It can just fill these carbonite tanks. That's just a carbonite detector on top. We did not bring a water detector. Once again, this was part of my flawed detector choice era, if you will. Okay, let's see how much it's going to cost. Found to be a bundle. Okay, 1400... Hold on, let me see if getting us closer... Well, Paul doesn't have much of a gravity to speak of. But let's just say... I did a radial... Oh, the radial adjustment costs, like, a lot. Okay, 1400 it is. We're gonna have to refuel this guy some other way after we do this. Flawed, pl pl bleh, flawed planning on my part. Probably because I didn't fully appreciate how much Delta V it'd take to get into orbit around these things. Okay, separation. And whatever engines we have here. Oh, the little Rocket Max 2477s. Well, I guess I couldn't fit too much else. Okay, we have orbit. Alright, only 234 meters per second left. So, we have managed to deliver our payloads to the dual system in various locations, all over the place in fact. Whether any good is going to come out of that, well, that'll depend on the follow-up missions. Scanner there, the dual oasis and the scanner there, the dual supply mission and the scanner at Tylo, uh, just a bop probe around bop, on, well, no, it is around bop now, and pending a return to Kerbin, and uh, this scanner and the water fountain here around Paul. Seems like everything could do with a little bit more fuel. Maybe that's something, but maybe we'll have to figure out a more complex way to organize all this. Seems like it would be better off if all of it was in the same location. And Val would be a prime target for that. At least it's probably not a good idea to try and move the Jewel Oasis. Yeah, alright, anyway. So, uh, many things accomplished this time, but next time I think it's uh, we will open a new chapter. We are going to think about Drez, and we're going to think about Carborundum. Alright, so on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.